Hello friends, today we are going to discuss about problem solving and decision making life skills. I am Dr. Suresh Padadmat, Professor of Psychiatry, working at Nimans, Bangalore. Before I start my presentation, I would like to place this disclaimer. This presentation is for academic and training purpose only, not for clinical opinion. For clinical opinion, please do contact a psychiatrist. Conflict of interest? None. In this video, I am going to discuss about problem solving skills, decision making skill, how to teach this problem solving and decision making skills to children and adolescents. This video is targeted to school and college administration, teachers, policy makers, parents, children, NGO, corporates and community at large. The important life skills which have been advocated by World Health Organization are 10 in number. They are the core set of life skills. They can be divided into three domains. Cognitive domain, also called as thinking domain, emotional domain and social domain. In cognitive domain, we have critical thinking, creative thinking, problem solving and decision making. With regard to emotional domain, coping with emotions, coping with stress, empathy and self-awareness. With regard to social domain, effective communication and interpersonal relationship. In this video, I am going to discuss about two important skills, problem solving skills and decision making skills. Let's discuss about problem solving. We need to define a problem. As per Cambridge Dictionary, it has been clearly said, a situation, person or a thing that needs attention and needs to be dealt with or solved. That is the precise definition of problem. Further, problem solving is an act of defining a problem, determining the cause of the problem, identifying, prioritizing, selecting alternatives for a solution and implementing a solution. This is the comprehensive definition of problem solving. If you move to decision making, what is a decision? As per Cambridge Dictionary, it has been clearly said that a choice that you make about something after thinking about several possibilities. What is then decision making? Decision making involves the selection of a course of action from among two or more possible alternatives in order to arrive to a solution for a given problem. If you look at both the problem solving and decision making, they fall in the spectrum. Initially, the problem solving starts with analyzing the problem, at the same time to understanding the problem, finding information about the problem, finding solutions, alternatives and from the solution you are going to choose one of them that is decision making. That means you can consider they are in the spectrum on either end. But however, one need to also understand decision making does not mean you need to have a problem. Every minute, every second you take decision. When you are traveling, you may have a decision to move towards the right. So you may take a right, right path or you may turn towards the left. Those decisions may not be a problem at all. It is the choice you make. So the decision making need not have problem at all. But however, when there is a problem, you need to solve the problem and to solve the problem, decision making is very important. So, I am discussing both the skills in this video. So, first and the foremost, problem solving and decision making. Why it scares the people? Whenever there is a problem, people become very upset, stressed out and they are worried. The simple reason is problem solving and decision making. Any problem means it will challenge the homeostasis, it will challenge your comfort zone and also it will push to make changes. Changes means it is uncomfortable for any human being or an animal. At the same time, whenever there is a problem, you need to do certain things to overcome this problem. But however, people become worried about the outcome, the consequences, the dreadfulness of the consequences. And instead of focusing on the problem, they will start focusing, if this will happen, what will happen to me? What will happen to my family? 
what does the society will think about me so these kinds of thinking process will create a huge problem with regard to becoming frozen without doing any decision or else we can call it as decision making paralysis it is a simple reason i'll be blamed for it or else i'll be responsible for taking a decision which may go wrong sometimes sense of responsibility and feeling guilt about the course of action can cause severe issues with regard to problem solving and decision making so let's move further problem solving and decision making are not synonymous with each other they are not the same but they are important skills need to be learned by the children children will become independent will be able to face the challenge of life if they are able to learn problem solving and decision making because every day you need to face a number of problems at the same time you need to make decision every second problem solving is an analytical process used to identify the possible solution to the situation in hand but however decision making is a deliberate logical choice from the available alternative solutions so problem solving and decision making they are the two faces of the same coin that means they go hand in hand problem solving is a process whereas decision making is a choice you take a decision by telling i will choose this path or i will choose this solution both problem solving and decision making go hand in hand problem solving and decision making can be of personal release personal choices or personal decision or personal problems or else the problems related to family friends and relatives it may be professional or job related imagine if you are a doctor you need to choose a course of action for the patient's treatment or else it may be organizational should i invest in this share market or else should i invest the organizational money into this product or else should i ask all my staff to do work from home or not so these organize organizational decisions making or else it may be society based decision for example if you are a person who is the president of an association or else if you are a political leader you need to make certain decision making or else you need to solve the problem the consequences of the decision is the one which scares everybody hence many people do not want to face the problems at all they do not want to take decision at all that means they will avoid situations let's understand the steps involved in problem solving and decision making there is a problem for that problem there is a solution is present why do you want to worry focus and move towards solving the problem that is an one example there is a problem but there is no solution why are you worried then learn to handle the emotions here so this is the best way of understanding if there is a problem and if there is a solution work towards it if there is a problem if there is no solution learn to handle the emotion best example i can give you is if a person has an illness such as maybe fever or a typhoid there is a treatment available seek help and take treatment suppose the same person develops cancer which is not treatable that means there is no solution learn to handle the emotions here rather than becoming frozen and not able to handle the able to handle the emotions so problem solving and decision making plays a very crucial role let's understand the traditional model of problem solving the traditional model talks about identifying the problem look for possible solutions identify the pros and cons of each solution pick a solution based on logical reasoning or else rarely with intuition you will take a decision and test it out so these are the simple steps of problem solving this traditional pattern of problem solving and decision making is time consuming needs more information needs more information that means possibility of decision making paralysis will be there imagine 
you have to go and buy a shirt. And when you enter into a showroom, there is more than 10,000 different types of shirts available. Many people may not be able to decide which shirt to buy. That means there is a decision-making paralysis. At the same time, this type of traditional method is conscious, aware making decision. That means the person is consciously making decision. It is rule-based, explicit process decision making. And it is difficult in immediate or else split-second decision making. The reason being is, here you will not go through entire steps. In such a scenario, this traditional method becomes null and void. So, in an emergency situation, what is the best model? Heuristic model is the best one. Here, the heuristic model talks about mental shortcuts or rules of thumbs used in decision making. Heuristic process that help human to solve problem and learn new concepts. That means, based upon your past experience, based upon your intuition, you take decision. It will occur at a split second. Every minute, every second, you are taking decision without your awareness. In the real world, decision making makes, decision making occurs very fast. And it occurs under many constraints, especially in medical field. A patient comes to the hospital in emergency situation. He may not have resources, he may not have money at all for treatment, or else there will not be the medicine available at that time in the hospital. There is no instrument available, or else the anesthetist is not available. In such a constraint, you have to take a decision. That decision may not be the right decision in an ideal situation. But in that present moment, you have to take decision because you need to save the life. That is called as heuristic model of decision making. Heuristic model of decision making are taken either consciously or unconsciously. That means, you are taking decision without even thinking also. This process, make, this process makes the problem less complex by ignoring some sort of information that is coming into the brain. You know, the patient is here, he needs ventilator. Unfortunately, the ventilator is not available. The best method and the best treatment is ventilator. If there is no ventilator available, you will use the available instrument to resuscitate. Or else, the best available medicine to be given. So, in heuristic model, it may ignore the important points which may have to be done, but unfortunately, because of the resource constraint or a time constraint, you may not be able to do it. Heuristics are simple decision strategies that ignore the part of available information, basing the decision only on few relevant predictors. Here, the decision made are on lightning speed. This occurs in the casualty, that is in emergency settings in a hospital. Now, let's understand the heuristic in healthcare model. That means, in healthcare setting, how does this heuristic occurs? One is, representativeness of the heuristics allows the people to judge. For example, if a young boy, maybe around the age of 18 or 20, reports to the hospital and says, chest pain. Depending upon the age, whether this person has any myocardial infarction or else it is just a musculoskeletal pain. So, based on this representativeness of heuristic, you take a decision. If the same person is elderly, aged around 70 years, complains of chest pain. In such a scenario, you will think of myocardial infarction. So, depending upon certain predictors, you will take a decision. That is representativeness of heuristic model. Moving to the second, anchoring and adjustment of heuristics allows the people to estimate a number by starting at an initial value and adjusting that to values for up or down. In this, imagine if the person needs a medication, what is the dose has to be given? This is done initially in the experimental model. The doses may be increased or decreased depending upon the blood level, depending upon the therapeutic level. On that basis, the dose for a particular illness, 
the medicine dose will be fixed and this becomes the standard operating procedure or the dose which needs to be given may be from 4 to 8 milligram that will be guided and that representative anchoring adjustment based upon the patient and based upon the standard operating procedure or else the treatment guidelines will be used by the doctor again here the decision is taken based upon the guidelines that means it is anchoring and adjustment heuristics moving to the availability of the heuristics allows the people to assess how often an event occurs or how likely it will occur based on a few parameters for example if a patient is visiting from an endemic area of malaria and he reports of fever and chills and invariably the first diagnosis will be malaria that is the availability of heuristic model will apply that means heuristic model is applied in and out in healthcare setting based upon the constraint of resource based on the availability of the manpower availability of the instrument availability of the medicine availability of the specialist specialized skill so in such a scenario you are going to take decision and those decision may not be idle but unfortunately whenever the doctor's medical negligence will be treated or assessed it will be based on the idealistic model that is unfortunately wrong let's understand the advantage of heuristic model it is the trade off between the accuracy over the effort here the effort has to be done immediately you are not waiting for the accuracy or a ideal situation and this heuristic model helps you to avoid decision making paralysis here you will take a decision based on the available scenario available situation time taken is very less but however uncertainty and with constrained resources this model helps in emergency decision making but the decision may not be completely 100% right but based on the situation that decision will be right and heuristic model may not be based on evidence based it may be irrational based upon the situation and let me be very clear heuristic model is intuitive automatic implicit processing decision making that means it's more of a gut feeling based upon certain few parameters now let's understand the barriers for problem solving and decision making there are many barriers let's look into that first and the foremost the person is not aware that there is a problem in his life imagine if a doctor does not believe that he is in stress he does not know there is a stress in his life how will he work towards the stress free life or not accepting the problem that is denial the doctor says i don't have any stress at all so that is again one is not aware another one is if somebody has also told but he is in denial procrastination let me take holidays later not taking the problem in hand immediately fourth worried or apprehensive fear about negative outcome of the decision making hence he may avoid the problem which he needs to take a decision fear of wrong decision fear of the consequences of the decision many a time lost in too many solution that is lot of informations are available and you may not be able to decide which one to choose you go to a shop there are more than 350 different types of mobile phones are available and each mobile is very attractive you find it very difficult to take a decision at the end of the day you may not take a decision at all because you are lost in too many solutions moving to how to teach problem solving and decision making in children and adolescent population a study conducted demonstrated that teachers teaching structured lessons through solving routine problems in textbook thus left the students with unrealistic problem which are quite boring that means the students when you give them a problem which is classical in the textbook and they solve it but the generalization of the skill will not occur because it is not a real life problem it is an imaginary problem which is posed in the textbook that kind of problem solving may not help the children and adolescents hence 
you need to teach problem solving and decision making in real life scenario that means it should be a real life context if you want to teach the multiplication of 6 into 2 you need to ask a child if you are buying 6 chocolates and each chocolate costs 2 rupees what is the cost that means it should be real life contact should be there at the same time don't jump and solve the problem of the children here you need to teach the way we approach the problem the way we analyze the problem the way we find the solution we way we look into the pros and cons of each solution that is advantage and disadvantage of each solution and finally you take a decision that means you need to teach the children to find the alternative solution solutions teach them how to solve the problem at the same time brainstorm them with the possible solutions advantage and disadvantage of each solution should be discussed with the child help them to take decision at the same time let them face the consequences of the outcome and again revisit the problem that means you are teaching a complete skills of problem solving and decision making not only that if the decision taken goes wrong that means the child also should know he is allowed to make mistakes he is allowed to be failure but he need to revisit the problem and resolve it that means perseverance need to be taught to the child just because he has failed in problem solving of the one of the problem that does not means he is a failure in life that need to be clearly ingrained into the mind of the child let's go through one of the important discussion about solving the problem and it should be a real life context imagine child says i want to buy a cycle now you need to sit with the child and start discussing you need to ask what are the different types of cycles are there which companies are making list out the company here there is a hero atlas hercules bsa various other cycles cycle manufacturers are there now you need to ask what is the purpose of buying the cycle how much cost is involved and how much you will be able to give the money or how much you are affordable what are the futures whether you want a geared cycle or without gear cycle whether it should be attractive whether it should be able to carry certain loads or else certain things on the cycle whether the service center is available nearby the house durability of the cycle warranty service center feedback from friends what is the model company name how much it values in the market resale value and the test ride so based upon all these variables you need to sit with the child and discuss each of the company and finally based upon the advantage and disadvantage you will help the child to take a decision that means you have taken the child through a journey of problem solving and decision making if you do that for few times over a period of time the child will learn the problem solving and decision making not only that the child also learns yes i am allowed to make mistakes yes i am allowed to be a failure but i will pursue for answering the problem one more discussion i'll make here the child after passing 10th standard wants to choose a subject now which one to choose whether the science arts commerce or diploma after the 10th standard now again you need to sit with the child instead of giving the ready made answer yes the commerce is best for you such decision should not be given because the child has not gone through the journey of problem solving and decision making you need to take the child in this problem solving and decision making journey now you need to look into the various pros and cons of each science arts commerce and diploma look at the interest of the child whether it is interested in science arts commerce or diploma what is the mark scored in 8th and 9th and 10th with regard to science social studies mathematics based on that you will take 
the mark scored what is the aptitude of the child which college is available which is the best college with regard to science whether it is available or not whether it is in the different district cost of the course that means affordability also plays an important role distance from the home whether the child has to stay in the hostel difficulty of the course future what is the future if you take science arts commerce whether the child is passionate about the subject or not what is the job security and if the family resources imagine if the family is a business family and they want to teach the child with regard to business commerce would be the best so based on these discussion you need to help the child to take decision not only that if the child has difficulty in decision making take the child to the different people who are considered to be expert in helping the child to make a decision and further if it is a very young child maybe around 8 year old or 7 year old in such a scenario for a birthday shopping you need to teach the child problem solving and decision making before that discuss with the child what are the problems in hand what is the amount we can spend on the your birthday let the child decide what to buy where to buy how much to buy and so forth and this time you need to discuss every step with the child guide them in making decision help them so that they get alternative solutions also focus on the outcome celebration that should not be done it is the process which you need to focus it takes time to teach problem solving and decision making but it is worth teaching the children because they becomes independent over a period of time imagine one more example i would like to give you if you want to teach the child how to brush the teeth that means you need to teach the child around 10 to 15 times after that the child will become independent for his life that is what the skill we need to teach the problem solving and decision making these are very important life skills once you teach them in the real life context they will be able to become independent and they will be able to lead the life successfully to conclude my dear friends problem means an opportunity opportunity to grow challenges means there is an opportunity for a every problem or a for every challenge there is an opportunity behind it we need to teach the children to find an opportunity take that opportunity into his advantage and we need to focus on the solutions alternative solutions advantages and disadvantages of each solution and you need to take a decision many a time you need to teach the child also heuristic decision making because every minute every second you need to take decision it may not be a problem at all but the decision has to be made sometimes you may not be able to take the decision immediately you need to seek help and you need to implement the best possible solution and you need to avoid procrastination or else avoiding the decision making so my dear friends problem solving and decision making they are the very important life skills which need to be taught to every child and an adolescent for a successful life thank you very much for giving your valuable time stay safe